Since the beginning of the Obama administration, there's been a heated debate about where to hold trials for 9-11 terror suspects currently at the U.S. detention facility at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Now, a leading Senate Republican says he wants terror suspects arrested in his home state, transferred to Gitmo, and tried there. The Kentucky Republican and the Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell joins us now from Capitol Hill. Senator, why? These two suspects were arrested here in the United States. The track record is arrested here, tried here. Why do you think they should go to Gitmo? Well, you know, a few years ago, John, we set up military commissions, a statutory process for trying foreign terrorists, uh, typically captured overseas. These are not American citizens. Their offense occurred in Iraq against Iraqi citizens. You can put foreigners in U.S. Article III courts, but the question is, should you? The answer is you should not, for a whole variety of reasons. Number one, you bring the war on terror to Bowling Green, Kentucky. You have security problems with regard to the judge, the prosecutor, the jurors. You have security problems that the local government ends up having to pick up uh, related to the transferring of prisoners back and forth between uh, the, the jail, if you will, or the prison, and uh, the court system. There's no reason for American communities to be subjected to this. You remember the administration thought about doing it with KSM, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the mastermind of 9-11. He's at Guantanamo. They, we're going to take him to New York and be tried there. Uh, you saw the reaction of New York to the possibility of this uh, foreign terrorist being tried in New York. Uh, you're going to have the same reaction in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is not the place for these uh, 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 characters. I think the administration would argue KSM is a higher profile than these two guys. But let's focus on the Justice Department. You mentioned the possibility of security problems, retaliatory strikes. The Justice yeah. Department says they simply see no evidence of that. Here's their statement. They say since 9-11, there have been hundreds of defendants convicted in our federal court system of terrorism or terrorism-related violations. In none of these cases has your judicial district suffered retaliatory attacks. Why are you worried about Bowling Green now? Well, that's precisely what happened in Alexandria. They've got it wrong once again. Over in Alexandria, Virginia, it created enormous problems when uh, one of the terrorists was tried over there. The Justice Department is simply wrong here. This ought not to occur. These are not American citizens. They're not entitled uh, to the uh, protections of the Bill of Rights. The, the focus ought to be on interrogation and detention, not prosecution. Maybe at the after interrogation and detention, occurs at an appropriate place like Guantanamo off of U.S. soil, some kind of prosecution might be in order. And the way to do that, of course, at that point would be in military commissions, which were set up specifically for the purpose. So the answer to the Justice Department is you, you can make these trials occur uh, in Bowling Green, Kentucky, but you shouldn't, and there's no reason to. I want to shift your subject to other issues. You are the leader of Senate Republicans. One of the big debates on Capitol Hill is, does the president have the legal authority to continue the military operations in Libya? The White House has just sent up this memo. I have it right here, making the case the United States is not acting alone. The United States does not have ground troops on the ground, and the president, therefore, is not subject to the War Powers Resolution. Is he? Well, you know, there are different points of view in the Senate Republican conference about uh, the president's authority in a situation like this. What does the I, uh, leader think? Well, I have a lot of members in a lot of different places, and I'm not going to announce to you tonight uh, my view of that. Uh, we, we all agree that there won't be uh, any American uh, soldiers on the ground. That's, that's good. Uh, we all agree it's better for the Americans to be in a supporting role. That's good. Uh, we don't have a unified conference position on the question of whether or not uh, the president has the authority to do it. This memo says $1.1 billion just for the Defense Department. There's some additional costs for the State Department. $1.1 billion for the Defense Department through the end of September. Is that a price worth paying for the American people right now? Well, Senator McCain, who has been to Benghazi and Libya, advises us that the, 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 the rebel group, the group that we obviously hope will take over the government here at some point, believes that the U U.S. government should be reimbursed uh, for its expenses. Uh, we think that's a good idea. Apparently, Libya has a lot of money uh, as a result, obviously, of their oil revenue, and we would hope and expect that we would be repaid. Well, let me ask you on that issue. One of the reasons this comes up is there's a lot of negotiations, a lot of political pressure to do something about the deficit and then the long-term debt. Uh, you're part of those negotiations with the White House right now, which wants Congress to give it the blessing uh, to raise the government's ability to borrow, to raise the debt ceiling. Some see a potential opening yesterday. You were among the senators who voted with your colleague, Senator Coburn, to try to eliminate ethanol subsidies. And what a lot of people are saying is that was Republicans right there saying some tax increases, taking some tax benefits away, which ultimately 
ultimately is a tax increase are okay if the goal is to reduce the deficit. Is that now on the table, tax increases? Well, you have a problem. If you, if you do tax reform, broad tax reform, which I'm in favor of, of doing, it, it's a complicated process. Uh, we, we've got about a, <clears throat> a month to six weeks here to work out some kind of agreement to cut spending in connection with the president's request of us that we raise the debt ceiling. I don't think we have the time to do comprehensive tax reform, which we ought to do, but I don't think we have the time to do that in connection with this particular event right ahead of us, which is his request of us to raise the debt ceiling. But that's what about gonna, what about some limited done, what about gonna, some limited Leader McConnell, excuse me, what about some limited tax increases, like maybe a revisit on the ethanol, maybe the oil no, we're, industry we're not, subsidies the president has <laughs> talked about? If I may answer, we're not doing tax increases in this discussion related to raising the debt ceiling. This is about spending too much. We have this problem because we spend too much, not because we tax too little. We're willing to look at the issue of tax reform but that cannot be done in the next month. Cannot be done in the next month. What do you hope to be done in the next month, lastly, on the question of Medicare, which some Republicans believe has become a bit of a political liability as we begin not only at the presidential level, but at the congressional level to get into the 2012 cycle, a cycle in which you very much hope to emerge from at the end as not the minority leader, but the majority leader? Well, all I can tell you is what it would take to get my vote to raise the debt. So we'd have to do something very credible to get our annual discretionary spending in the next couple of years and in the out years on a continued declining path. And we would have to do something about entitlement reform, as that certainly would include Medicare. You, it, it's a huge problem. The, the president's own cabinet, the trustees of Medicare and Social Security, have said it's in trouble now. You can't have a credible deficit reduction package and leave Medicare out of it. Leader McConnell, appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Take care, sir. Al Gore is praising one of the Republican presidential candidates. We'll tell you who and why next.